Welcome to this support video for programming basics. Below we've got a diagram of a computer. Now this is probably very familiar to you, you probably saw it at the beginning of the course. So the idea is that you have got an input, a processor, output and memory. Now this all uh, works together in order to make a computer program run. So the processor follows the steps that are in the program. So say you're playing uh, a first person shooter game, the processor at some point in its program will be told to go and get input to check what buttons are pressed and that kind of thing. So it will then get input from the controller and perhaps you press the button to fire your rifle. And because you press the button to fire your rifle, there's a couple of things that could happen. So first of all, if you've got bullets in your rifle, then uh, obviously it's going to fire the rifle. Otherwise, it's going to make that dreaded clicking sound where you've not got any bullets. So if we have a look, it's got to know how many bullets you've currently got. And there is going to be... A little area of memory teeny tiny area of memory that holds a whole number representing the number of bullets and the processor is going to uh, get that data and if it's one bullet in there or more it will fire and if it's zero bullets it won't fire now the firing will then be output now let's say in this situation you do have 10 bullets in your uh, gun just here. So the processor, yes, it says you've got 10 bullets. So of course you can fire, but then of course it's got to take a bullet away. So it's got to work out 10 minus one equals nine. And then it's going to take that value and write it over the top of this value and you've now got nine bullets it will go to load more instructions it will forget this the processor can't remember very much at all but when you press the input again it will then go and check oh i've got nine bullets yes i can fire and so on and so forth so that is pretty much how variables work is there's a number in the memory which represents the number of bullets. Now you could have this stored as just a memory address. This is where the number of bullets are stored. But programmers, uh, being lazy, uh, want to refer to it by a name. And that name is what we would call a variable. It's an identifier, the name that is associated with a value. So if I rub all of that out, Let's go through this program up here just very shortly, very quickly. Uh, we do the first line first, print, enter a number. Well, the processor will output that very easily. We go on to line number two. It says we need an input, so we get some input from the keyboard. In this case, I'm gonna put 5.1. That's the input done, 5.1. Done. And it says turn it into an integer, because this, of course, is a string and we end up with 5.1. So num1 should be set to 5.1. So we've got some memory here. This is where num1 is gonna be stored. And 5.1, the processor writes that into there. Next line, we've got some more output. And then next line, we've got the same process again. But in this case, we get the input for the second time and this is going to be 3.2 just because I decided that's what we're going to uh, have as our input and we convert that into an integer and we store that in our memory so there's another little box here that says 3.2 okay so now the next line says total is num1 and num2 so the processor actually has to read back in num1 as 5.1, num2 as 3.2, and it adds them together and it gets 8.3. And then that 
is 8.3 and it writes it back into total which is going to be yeah so now we've got three variables with three bits of uh, data in the memory and our final thing is we do some output but the processor by the time it gets to here may well have forgotten all of this so it has to go to memory yet again and read in the 5.1, read in the 3.2, and read in the 8.3, and then finally it can output 5.1 plus 3.2 equals 8.3. So that is what variables are doing. They're putting things in and out of the memory, and you have to assume that between each line of code, the computer doesn't know what you calculated on the last line, it's got no clue. It's just following the instructions one by one blindly. I hope you found that useful to clear up how variables work with memory. And uh, we'll move on in the next video to talk about different kinds of value.